Carl Anderson. Oh, a Lance Arroyo. How's it going? Are you kidding me? I feel like somebody just uh, prodded me with an American flag and then twisted. I know. How crazy was that? Yeah. January 12th. That's, that's, that's today's date. So everyone's wondering how long yeah, it's been. So that happened. When did that happen? A that week. A week ago. A week ago. Yeah, that was crazy. We were both working. Right? <laughs> yeah. When it happened. Yeah. And I had the news yeah. on in the background. And I'm like, man, this is crazy. This is ridiculous. But, and then apparently this weekend there might be, there might be riots or something at all the 50, at all, every single capital. Did you hear about that? Yeah. Possibly. So, uh, so the, yeah, they're, they're trying to, from what we understand, they're, they're organizing, um, uh, a lot of these, that the radical right wing is uh, or trying to organize for, um, in every state. Um, mm-hmm. and then also there's another, um, um, maybe a disruption for the inauguration of Joe Biden. So yeah, but but Trump called in like the National Guard, I think, and something like that. But I when I Something heard like it, I was that. like, really? He's gonna? I mean, that's a good thing that he's doing. It doesn't seem like him. Okay, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. But anyways, okay. on a positive on a positive uh, note, what are you uh, what are you watching nowadays? Did you watch the the new Disney stuff? I know that WandaVision comes out on the fifteenth, which is I I am. You know the new Disney stuff. It's it's actually just it it or Marvel is, Marvel stuff, right? What did I just say? Disney. I mean, I get, whatever. It's all yeah. owned by Disney. So the new, but it's the, it's the, <laughs> the stuff. The uh, legacy is basically uh, there's two episodes right now, and um, it is basically just a recap of the stories of. Um, currently right now of uh, of Wanda and Vision. So it's um it's really to kind of get you up to speed so you understand oh, what the the narrative of Wanda Vision um so we're refreshed of their relationship and their budding romance and you know needs and wants and kind of fill in the gaps when um when Disney throws these little tiny nuggets that only like super fans would be like, oh, I remember that from Civil War. Um, right, right. Yeah, they want to refresh us. Oh, so it's just, but it's only for their storyline, for both of their storylines. Like it goes through the movies and then ends up like how they meet. More, yeah, they more than likely, their, more than likely, they're probably going to use Legacy to uh, move through um, the Marvel characters uh, whenever they release something new. So oh, of course, you know, for Falcon, wow, that's so. That's smart because then you can, you don't <laughs> have brilliant. to be, you don't have to be like, like you said, like so knowledgeable or have seen all of the movies in the past. You just this, watch that and then you're all caught up pretty much. Yeah. Like cliff so notes. Um, it's yes. Cliff notes, but it also serves many, <laughs> many purposes. So yes, a for fans, number one, um, it's it, it's like oh yeah like it it just it brings you back to their to their to the coolest moments and compresses their story into one seven minute timeline so you're like oh yeah I got the crux of it but then you know for the people who are watching it on the couch and then maybe they're watching it like WandaVision with people who are not Marvel fans um, it allows them to be able to like. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw you watching this. It, it allows people to catch up or to understand what's happening um, for non-Marvel people who, like my wife, who's probably like, like "Why? I didn't you get enough of your Star Wars business?" You know. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it it allows people to, uh, you know, to buy in uh, and somehow get attached to these characters so they understand what's happening because you know, a story is obviously always more enriching and engaging and you're probably willing to talk about it more if you dig it and you're probably going right. to like it if you know um, the needs and wants the hero's journey, right? Yeah. Speaking of, I not to go off topic too much, but I know there's a new Game of Thrones show that's a prequel to the regular Game of Thrones show and I've always wanted to watch it and my goal or my what I what I planned on doing was that after the last uh, Game of Thrones aired, yeah, I was I was gonna go back and watch the whole thing, and then everyone was like, "The last season sucks. The ep- the last episode really sucks." So I was like, eh, "I don't know if I want to commit to that." So I wonder if 
aside from like YouTubers doing it, doing a recap, yeah. I wonder if HBO is going to do kind of like something or at least like, a, or, you know, some kind of special or show where they kind of like go over it. Bring it Otherwise, back. I'm just going to have to. Well, no, I mean, like not bring it back, but like kind of do something like that. But maybe just mm. one special where it's like, hey, you know, let's get you caught up on what happened in Game of Thrones and then we'll. I wouldn't even know how you'd even begin to do that. I don't know, but I mean, if that doesn't happen, then I'm just going to have to find a YouTuber's, <laughs> you know, like kind of like, this is what happened in season one. Like, you know, just the gist. Just so overall, you know, I know season what's two. The, what's the guy's name the from, what's the guy's name from, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's the guy's name from um, Queer Eye uh, with long hair? <laughs> I know who you're talking about. I don't know though. Why he does a recap of stuff? Oh, that's right. You said he started off, didn't he? Start off doing like the, he was the doing. He was doing a, 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 an after or a, a compendium, a comedy compendium of like the Cliff's Notes in a funny fashion called Gay of Thrones. And it was um, on HBO. Yeah, that's right. I'm pretty sure it was right after. Hold on. Hold yeah, on, but on. that see that like, that that would be super helpful. Jonathan Van Ness. God, why? It's on the tip of my tongue. I'm sleepy. Yeah, see, I gotta, that, I gotta that would be muscle. super helpful. Yeah, so he would, each week he would have, he's because he does hair, and each week he would, um, he would absolutely like, you know, gay out and hair, like do some, do, as he's doing a hairstyle of somebody, right? He's doing yeah. her hair and he's but, talking but about give, what happened. Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, see, so something like that. Or yeah. maybe, maybe I just watch every episode he ever did of that. And, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like a, yes. A, and if after I you need. did that, you probably like, why am why did I ever watch Game of Thrones? Like he Yeah. I just I've so just ridiculous. seen yeah, I've just I've just lived with people that have watched and then you know, like I from what I remember from what little I remember, you know, just like passing by, there'd be there was a horse's head that got cut off or got chopped off. There was a young prince that was a big prick. He ended up choking, I think. On Hold on a second. Or, or, so he died. I, I, I think died. I misunderstood you. Did are you saying that you you haven't seen them? I thought you were watching them. No, 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 no. You haven't I've seen never, them. So I've I've seen clips here and there. You know, like going by the living room and watching. Oh people my watch god! It. But I would have but totally everyone, reframed what I was going to say. Was, no, it's yeah. But I was already through episode, or sorry, they were already in season three or four or whatever. And by that time, I'm like, I don't want to go back. And they take like a year for the next yeah. season. I'm like, I don't want to do that. Let me just wait until it all comes out and I'll watch yeah. it one time. And then, of course, the last season came out and I was like, all right, well, maybe it's just not, yeah, it's no, not worth it at this point. Um, I, w I would, I'm only going to say this. I would say this about very few things, but it never Cliff Notes, Game of Thrones. <laughs> I would not do it just because... What's so beautiful and amazing about this series are the 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 little family stories that are incredibly close to home. I mean, like they, they you can see shit like this happening. Um, I mean, brother and sister humping. I don't know. I don't know how often we see that. But um, all the other stuff, like the family, everything that that happens is is a uh, is. is is pretty good. I can't even anything that I'll say about it right now just cheapens it. So it's I would never cliff notes. I I, I notes. do know apparently that the first couple seasons are up to some point, and then it has like a steep decline from what I hear from many many. Yes. Fans. Yeah, man, you you got you got the skinny perfectly, Lance. I'll tell because you that because right I'm now. the only one that I know that <laughs> hasn't seen it. <laughs> so I, I mean, it, they talk about it and they have watch parties, and I'm just like, all right, well, I don't. You don't even it's, invite me because I, I don't know anything. It took me three years to get my wife on board. And by three years, I mean, we watched the whole first season and she's like, I'm not getting into this. I'm like, the next year, because the next season came on, I'm like, hey, let's try it again. So we tried watching season one again. And she's like, I just, no. And then for some reason, the third time, with the third year. The third season. She... Yeah kind of got into it and then she oh. i started watching the next season after that and then it was like glued like she was glued and then she was crying 
on episodes and then she was flabbergasted on other episodes and we would have Game of Thrones nights where I would have to cook meat on the bone because it made her feel, uh, you know, barbaric. <laughs> no, I, I don't know if I can do it. But I'll watch, or you know what, you know what, maybe I'll watch the new one, the prequel. And it won't ruin it because it's a prequel, right? So I could watch it. Well, and is this I in production? Know, I won't know. I'm not mistaken. So, like, if I watch the prequel, right? Yeah. It's not like I'm ruining watching Game of Thrones because I don't care what happens in the future. Right? So, I just won't know what they did in the future. I think that logically makes sense. Yeah, so they don't... They're saying that they have no... When it... Are you sure? Okay, maybe, am I just reading, like, Reddit threads that mean nothing? Hold on, let me see. Release date. House of the Dragon. That's what you're looking at? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a prequel. Yeah. The story of House of Targaryen. Did I say that right? It's a release date. Pr principal uh, production on House of the Dragon set to begin in 2021. Yeah, so it says we'll be hitting HBO and HBO Max in 2022. Game of Thrones prequel. Ah, see, I was right. All right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. George R. R. Martin, man. Same. Oh yeah, is it going to be the same writers that did the last season or last two seasons? Because I heard they were the ones that ruined it. It better be. I heard they're the ones that ruined it. Wait, wait, wait. I thought they were the ones that ruined it. Yeah, but they did right? so well up to the. Something had to happen at the end where they're like, "Can you please cut it short?" Or maybe they, yeah, that's who what knows of, what. I've heard a lot of re, a lot of people or a lot of reviewers say that it seemed like they. They kind of wanted to end it or whoever wanted to end it. And then they had a certain amount of episodes to do it in. And they just yeah. got forced into like a corner where it's like, okay, you need to finish this because you only have this many episodes. You just got to, they ended up having them just cram some kind of story to put an ending to it. It felt lazy. Right. Yeah. It felt very lazy. So like why, I so mean, why do you want them to be the writers of the new one? Well, because they did so, I mean, out of all their seasons, but okay, they they effed up the last one, but maybe not entirely. Yeah, there but wasn't they, didn't didn't they only do the last two? The, the right. And I don't. These I, new guys come in. I'm I'm pretty. Sh I, I mean, this is coming from someone that didn't even watch the show. <laughs> from what I understood, the the writers that did the last season or the last two seasons were. They came in, and I believe. Their challenge also was that they had no source material. Does that sound familiar? No source material, I meaning do. that there wasn't a book. Yeah, that yeah, they yeah, could yeah. that they could copy from. From, from what I understand, I yeah, know a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I know a, a shocking amount of a show. I've never sat down and watched. <laughs> just because everyone talks about it, I'm just I just so happen to be in the area. Um, but yeah, I just uh, speaking of, I just signed up for HBO Max. Ah, oh. I have to say. For what reason? Uh, so, I mean, really, honestly, why? Like, why? Why? Very, like, it it's going like, to sound really, really weird. No. So the other night, I'm texting a, a friend of mine, and I I sent a GIF, a Silicon Valley GIF, to the show. <laughs> yeah. And that that was it. Honestly, it was like Saturday. Was it Saturday night? <laughs> I think it was Saturday night. And I was just like, all right, well, I want to watch Silicon Valley. Even though I've okay. seen the whole the whole show, at least like the whole, you know from front to back at least three or four times, and I'm just like I, that's what I want to do. Plus, I miss having friends like in the background twenty four seven. <laughs> and that was that, and and um and I gotta say the shows on there. I didn't know they had that many like mm -hmm. channels or like shows. There's a ton of. I was shocked. I was if I had to pick between all, the only reason why I have Netflix. Is really because I share it with my mom, and I yeah. want her to. You know, she watches like TV shows, um, but if I had to pick one, I would pick. I'd probably pick the HBO one over <laughs> all of them. Seriously, I, if I had to pick one, I would. That's exactly what I would pick for you because I understand the kind of um, consumer you are of movies. So you, you were, you know. I will, even though you probably would not say this, I would consider you a very picky uh, movie watcher because 
you know, there are some pretty good movies out there, which you're like, yeah, it didn't, it didn't hold my attention and you kind of zone out. <laughs> right. I will give a shitty movie a really good chance and try and look at it and be like, what were they trying to do with this? And I'll try and give it the benefit of the doubt. And you know, in the end of the day, I'm like, like, well, yeah, you, it's, it's a really shitty movie, but I, I, I will watch it all the way through and like, and enjoy it. Like, you know, yeah. imbibe it as while it's, while I'm doing I, it. I only do that for the most part unless the movie has a um, or I, I won't do it unless the movie has a high rating and I'll I'll give it past a half an hour or an hour rating. or 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 a documentary I, I always give I, I tend to give doc- documentaries some some more leeway yeah Just because you never you know you never know where the twist is it might be like halfway through or the ending's like really nice or something yeah, and one, well, you know, it's it, documentaries grounded in reality, so exactly know. right. right yeah, right. so like, I remember once. Um, oh no, we were kids. Ch- Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You know, before internet God, came that around, gave me, this that gave me nightmares growing up because I wasn't old enough to watch it. Like uh-huh. I was a real little kid when it came out. Yeah, but I, I remember seeing. You know, it would come up on TV or whatever. Yeah. And it was shot in the 80s or early 90s, right? Was it early? No. The original? Oh, no, no, 80s. Yeah, uh, yeah, the original 80s, was right? 70s. Oh, was it 70s? Yes, but it had that. I don't know if they did it on purpose, but, you know, it had that kind of. That film grainy look that, that gra- exactly. Rob Zombie <laughs> loves to reproduce. Exact. Yeah, like I, that is terrifying. That yeah, yeah. what is it about that grainy look that is um, terrifying? Hills Have Eyes, the original, also has that yeah, same I look. Haven't, I haven't seen Hill, I haven't seen any of the Rob Zombie movies, but I hear they're ridiculously gruesome. Yeah. But, um, um, no, that that grain that that grainy film thing. Is, Seventy four. So, oh, so, yeah. so back in the so way back in the day, everyone when they when the movie came out, you know, people took liberties with. You know, based on a true story, based on a true yeah, story, isn't it? It is right. Or there is. I, it is based in some truth, I, but uh, I don't think there was a Leatherface. Who, right? It's based in some, uh, and I think it's kind of a little far fetched on how, on, you know, I think there was like cannibalism there, but I don't know. I don't think it was. Um, he oh, but he like, didn't wear people's faces, I think. Yeah, I don't think so. But I think they had the skin uh-huh. of people, right? They tanned the skin. Um, But when we heard that, (laughs) when I heard that, everyone heard them like, oh, it's the true story, right? And it is the true story. And um, when I watched it the first time, I'm like, you know what? I didn't, I didn't, as a kid, I'm like, I didn't dig the movie and everyone got mad at me. How can you not like it? It's a true story. You can't say it's bad. It's a true story. I'm like, no. And it's, and it's, way pre-internet too right so you yeah. can't you can't be like I'm, okay you know what i don't believe you i'm gonna google it yeah so like in it, mouth it, it must right be so in my head yeah so um i think documentaries as you were saying can you you give them leeway because a they're real mm-hmm. um that's why movies are so much more scrutinized because you're making the stuff up and you know it should be entertaining to a degree but like that one documentary you were talking about, like that does that sounds like somebody totally wrote that shit. Which one? Odessa. Odessa. What's called? The one with the uh, you were telling me the only documentary you were raving about on Showtime. Odessa. With the they bought oh, a submarine. Showtime? Oh, um, oh shoot, project, um, project. What's it called? No, it's on. Um, it's on Netflix. Showtime. That's on Netflix. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's made by Showtime, but it's it's um on, yeah, it's called Project um Odessa. I think it's called Project Odessa. Hold on, what's it yeah, called? Odessa. Yeah, that that is that is seriously one of yeah, yeah. Op, no, Operation Odessa. Oh, Operation Odessa. That is seriously one of the best. Do- yeah, but you know what though? With that documentary, you it's like right from the beginning credits. It's got that Miami Vice style narcos feel. Yeah. And you're hooked. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And it only gets better. And it's because all of the characters 
are you you literally couldn't have written better characters than them. And then like I told you earlier that the guy has the Russian voice. He's like a, a, a yeah. his name well, his nickname is Tarzan, first of all. And he's like, I don't want to He sounds he sounds Russian. <laughs> he sounds Russian. Yeah. In and, Russia, and, and submarine has, buys you. <laughs> yeah, and he's <laughs> not like yeah, I know that you're exaggerating there. Yeah. That's what he sounds like. But that's like what like it if you watch like. it, that's what he sounds like. Yeah, and he's like a big dude. Quintus, your stereotypical and quintessential. He's, and yeah. he's so yeah, and he's like crazy friendly. Yeah. That he's so friendly that you have all these like hardened Colombian drug lords and they talk to him and they're like, Oh, what do you think about Tarzan? And they sit back and they're like, I love that guy. Like every, every the hardened Russians, they're like, I love that guy. Even yeah. people that he snitched on, they yeah. they literally said like, "Oh, he's like a brother to me. I always love him." And he's just like, yeah. his, he, he was a bad guy, but he wasn't like a killer. He was more of a." He was yeah, no, there like there a, there are grades. There you are. Know what I mean, yeah, there are tiers. Yeah, yeah levels and grades too. Yeah. How bad? But it's funny because he's he's like he's like friends with a lot, or he has connections with a lot of the guys that are like Russian mafia killers. Yeah, and he even says he's like, yeah, I don't like them. <laughs> like he, only, <laughs> he only likes the nice, the nice criminal. But no, it's it's a it's a great episode or a great. Uh, hey, hey, let me ask you. Let me ask you this. So this is what I think about all the time, and you know, ever ever since, even before a week ago. So, not to get back on this subject, but do you think that? Because here's the thing: I see life as movies like all the time i'll i'll always uh look at things and then kind of uh tie them back to movies so uh, my question is to you like do you do you think the people who stormed the capitol do you think in their book in their movie yeah that they're the good guys because there's no yes. there's no for sure movie out there except no, for like for sure. v for vendetta uh, that that kind of shows. Well, no, I'm sure there's a bunch more, but um, that shows that they're the the heroes in this story. It's just so weird. Like to me, it's like no, they're the people they, who they think destroy they think the Rambo. White House. <laughs> in uh, like Olympus has fallen. <laughs> no, they they for sure think that yeah that they're like Rambo or that they're doing some huge amazing thing and they're oh you know what they think they're they're patriots you know, no no that's they're what they keep calling themselves saving patriots. the country and they're and they're that guy in the headdress speaking of movies you know the guy in the headdress is actually a, an actor from arizona did you know that yes yes yeah. so you want to talk about being in movies you got all these people dressed up yeah and literally dressed up in headwear so it was i'm not i'm not surprised and then you have that that uh that guy from hawaii that's Head of the Proud Boys. I mean, you know, I, I mean, some made, made me a little sad. I was a little sad. I gotta be honest with you. I was sad. It <laughs> makes me a, a really sad, so especially coming from Hawaii. I mean, one of the most diverse states, if so not he, the most diverse state. Okay, so uh, I've had this reoccurring, and I think I've mentioned it to you this before. I've definitely told my wife. <laughs> um, I have this reoccurring uh, fantasy. But you know, a bad fantasy, like a, it's a, it's not, it's a fear, right? But I, I um, <clears throat> I, is it a zombie I attack? Is it a zombie attack? Zombie attack? No, because I don't, I don't believe in zombies. But I do believe. Have you seen the road with um, what's his face? The road. That is the most. Oh, uh, he was. He, I just reviewed one of his movies. That was a. He's the guy from uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, what's his name? Um, wait, The Road. All right, I looked up The Road, and all I find is a Korean movie. Is it what? Is a Korean movie? That's, that must no, be. no, no. It's it's a sci-fi book. Oh, okay. I see it. Two thousand nine. Uh, yeah. Vigo Mortensen. Vigo. God, what's wrong with me tonight? V good old Vigo. Okay, so The Road is a terrifying movie to me dystopian right but um is it like is it like um is it like um children of men 
like that kind of very much so except we've at least in children of men um yeah it's very it, in the same vein yes I, so I, fyi i love that movie i mean for I really so many like reasons it has that the one of the very first that kind of changed the face of another thing like kind of like the matrix style changed the face of filming they that one giant well how long was that shot that 22 minute like looked yeah, like a steady the steady cam shot, shot. Mm-hmm. yeah uh, uh, uh amazing uh cinematography if I'm, mistaken, if I'm not mistaken i don't know if it was that super long cut but in one of the long cuts i was watching something on youtube but i think it was in the car i don't know what scene but they showed where they either did it. the cut or where yeah and it was pretty pretty clever how they how they hide the cuts yeah. Even now, in that in that arm in that military movie, nineteen eighteen yeah. or nineteen seventeen, the one that just came out, they oh, talked yeah. about how they hid they hid the cuts, and I watched it like Hawkeye, like trying to see where it was, and I couldn't. There was like, there was one time, a game for you, where I actually no, I'm sorry, there were two times. It was one time where he enters the cave. Oh, sorry, if anybody didn't see it, whatever, we're running it for you. <laughs> that one time he enters the cave that eventually has the dynamite. Do you remember that? In which and one? Which they order? go in, and it's comp- in 1917, or the, the movie 1917, the one with. The oh super yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if I I saw two cuts that I can remember. With the, the uh, one is wire. where he's with the, he, he's yes. So when they're walking in, remember when it turns all black? Like that's a that's a pretty easy easy cut. Yeah. There was that, and then there was the one where he's running. And I, I, I mean, I knew there were cuts in there, but I was trying to look for it. There was another. I, I was looking for all of them too. Yeah, but, in 1917. I mean, regardless, yeah. regardless, yeah. they did a great job. Mm. I, I think the whole movie was pretty good. I think I, I like how they showed, they showed the, um, how it's not always spectacular. You know what I mean? Like, yes. From what I read or what I've seen, there's a lot of just like just mundane. Do, this mundane sitting, yeah. I mean, you're an 18 year old kid or whatever, you know, you're yeah. ba- barely an adult and you're in a war and you're just kind of waiting for something to happen. I bought that movie. Really? Yeah. I, yeah. I bought it. Great, great movie. Uh, great movie. Yeah. Anyways, so, going, going back to the road. Sorry. Uh, no, no, no. You were saying about the road. So the road is one of my uh, greatest fears, like my uh, fantasy fears come true. If people like, if, if people really believe the, uh, like the zombie apocalypse is possible that it's, I don't think it is. So it's not a real fear, but the road, this, the, the narrative and the setting of the road is incredibly, um, uh, okay. So it's basically set in the near future, right? It's like now in the near future. And there is an undisclosed cataclysmic event. Something happens. (laughs) We just know that like, Trees are falling, shit's burning all the time, and um, they never really talk about it. Whatever it, whatever it is, the Something world's happened. going to pot. Yeah, but people are still continuing throughout their life because you have to. You know, we have homes. There's still TV. There's you know stuff of what we still do today. But as we go further on, it's like, uh, it's like oh, it's like torture of what what what's happening like outside and um to the point where the most of the story is basically vigo and his son his little boy who's like seven eight years old and he has he's trying to take this kid to the west coast (laughs) this is just walking and along the way they have to fight they have to you know it's a tale of survival but in this post-apocalyptic world where like you know, everyone is obviously for themselves and there's very few people left. Nothing's, le- it's, it, it's one of those that where like Requiem for a Dream where it starts off pretty bad and then it just gets worse. <laughs> it's like yeah. delivery and like, <laughs> so I, I remember not to go this, off what's subject. happening, what's happening outside. That's a great movie though. What's happening outside reminds it, it would be like the prequel to the road. Mm. It's like, this is how we got there. This is how it. Like this civil, is like how a civil it war, civil war, or he, and then uh, society sort of breaks down, government breaks down, people stop um, caring about certain kind of things. Therefore, environment goes to hell. So, do you a lot think of things before go to hell. you get to that point, you get the the purge? 
I haven't seen any of those movies, by the, the way. The Purge? No, The Purge. Uh, the Purge is because I seen there was. It. But you know the. But you know, you get the idea, right? Okay. You know, from you know what I understand from the trailer, it's yeah. uh, in order to stop crime or something. They basically tell everybody that wants to commit a crime, you have this one day and do whatever you want, and the cops won't get you. Is that it? Something? Uh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what it effectively is. what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I've seen, yeah. uh, I saw like one, I think it was on TV once. I just left it on and I was like, what absurd movie is this? And yeah, sure no, was like Purge I, I love or, the, I love whatever. the premise. I love the premise. You can do all kinds of stories with that. I love that premise, but. Yeah. I, don't know. I think the first one came out or out around the Saw time. Around that yeah. time where it was those like kind of gruesome movies and, you know, the choices you make, blah, blah. But okay, so here's the thing. You're and you're gonna probably laugh at me. But do you know what? Well, you know what movie is very similar to kind of like the beginning of what's happening. Twelve Monkeys. <laughs> Think about yeah, it. I guess. Think yeah. about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's the then you I know the, wa- eventually the government that, collapses in Twelve Monkeys. But you know, was that the first big movie that um, our first movie that uh, Brad Pitt got? Brad Pitt's in there, right? It's been a long time. I know he's Bruce in Wilson there. In there. So he's, that's not, yeah, not yeah, his yeah. first big like, one. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought that... Well, isn't that one of the first ones where he was taken seriously, though, where they were like, oh, he can... He's not just a pretty Act face. crazy? You can act. Yeah. You know, that's funny. No. That's all you needed. Maybe. You just act crazy. He was entertaining, right. but yeah. it's like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it's... Um, I, I personally don't think people should get um, uh, praised for being able to act acting cr- nuts crazy yeah disturbed yes maybe mm-hmm. like if you have like deep seated problems but you know Pitt's character is just like mm, yeah nah, right <laughs> have you you know who you know who plays really good bat shit crazy mm. just get okay seriously think think about think about it seriously been around oh, for a long time yeah and plays an amazing bat shit crazy and he does what, a lot of movies what kind of bat shit crazy Yelling, Cause... cursing, like off, you know, <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, there's a YouTube compilation of him just cursing for like five minutes. Oh, you mean Nick Shore. Cage? Yeah. Yeah. He, he plays, what do you think about him? He plays a great bad shit crazy. It's entertaining. No, yeah. And he's really good at it. I mean, he, yes. he completely like lets go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's entertaining. Anyways. Um, no, but uh, the the thing is, is like I think that there's, you know, when it comes to like the civil war, the the collapse of society, I think that there's, yes, nearly fifty percent of the people voted for Trump, but I don't, I don't think that there's seventy million people out there that want to go to civil war, or want to, you know what I mean? Yeah, but you don't need I mean, that many. Realistically, you, you just need yeah, a small. You just true. need a small amount. To continuously make life horrible for the rest right, of us. Right, right, right. Yeah. Like a lot of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And well, the, the, for the that fact that we have to start changing happen. stuff. I mean, look at look at how ridiculous we had to get after 9-11. And I shouldn't say right. the word ridiculous, but look at all of the changes school that shootings. our lives went through well, look after at the school 9-11. school shootings, right? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, look at the school shootings. Like there's, that's still a problem. You know, th- thankfully yeah. for COVID, which is weird that you know, there's yeah. no school. You know, no, yeah. nobody in school that much. But I mean, remember like last year or, or maybe the two years ago, it was literally more it was like every week there was at least one, not just yeah. in school, but just like a mass shooting. Ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Ridiculous. But yeah, you're uh, right. I mean, unfortunately, that's. So uh, but in my head, OK, you know, after 9-11, the things that they had, to, uh, the, the, all of the things that we had to do uh, to try and protect us right and those were outside invaders <laughs> now they're inside they're, i can't even I imagine know. what we what we're, what we're going to come with come up with to try and protect the government officials elections schools that happen to have a president's name on it that was democrat who knows right it's like, those, i don't those, know those um ted cruz not, not this is not a political podcast obviously but ted cruz and that other dude they suck. Who? Josh? <laughs> Those guys. Yeah. Oh my gosh. 
They're ridiculous. I mean, the fact that Mitch McConnell today said that he was like, he, I think someone quoted him as saying he'll never talk to Trump again. Did you see that? It was on CNN. Yeah. And he hasn't, he hasn't talked to him apparently since December 26th, I think. He hasn't, because he didn't want to sign the, um, something about, I think it was a stimulus related. Yeah. So it's been a while since he's talked to him anyways, but. So, okay. So here, so here's a tech question. It's kind of funny because, you know, after, after, <laughs> I oh, I, I've, I dude, actually Trump. really enjoy it. I and you know on a and a purely um you know on a on a on a purely like gut level in I I'm so happy that but everyone decided like no sorry you know we're, we're still a okay. private company so you know I Twitter tw- Twitter isn't you know a government um you know, product. So they can do, they can do whatever they want. Yes. They can. It, it, when you, when you sign on that agreement where it says, I agree that nobody ever reads, it's like, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's not, not a public it's a, service. It's a contract. No, it's not, it's not a public right, it's service. It's not like, yeah. So um, they can do what they want. It's like, it's like getting kicked out want. of the restaurants. And then every restaurant in town is like, dude, that guy's a, fucking, that guy's yeah. a jerk. Don't let him in your restaurant. And everyone like, yeah, out of you're blacklisted. blacklisted. I love. I, there's a there's a graphic going or a, a picture of Fox News. I don't know if you saw it. And it's going on. It's going um, on Instagram everywhere. But it's a it's just a still of a Fox News telecast news telecast, and it has on their big screen. It has um like Trump is is uh like banned from all of the and it's so random. It's like Twitter, which you know you expect, but also Spotify which I find hilarious. Like he's like, Oh, you want to make a playlist? No, no, no. You cannot make it like no, a, a ton of ones that you just, there was a reason make. why that I forgot what the reason was for Spotify, but like it even went down to PayPal that some of these, um, <laughs> no, cause like there was these, uh, uh, evangelical, oh, you can accept payments. Is that what it well, is? You can accept. Yes. Payments. So there are these evangelical, um, uh, you know, organizations that would use PayPal to uh help you know uh, a fund right-wing efforts but then also help fund the organization and they paypal said no <laughs> we don't want you doing that not not uh, not with paypal so they mm-hmm. you know paypal shut down this uh right-wing I organization like, from doing it. it's like someone... every little corner is just it's it's almost like all of the mean stuff and um, attacking that this president did in early on Finally. in this. Yeah. And it's like, now it's coming right back. Right. I love, um, I, I, I'm paraphrasing here, but someone wrote on Twitter, let me see if I can find it real quick, but essentially they were, they were saying like, thank, thankful that, um, <laughs> that Trump got, got a, kicked off of, you know, all these, you know, all these platforms. Oh, I guess I didn't retweet it, but, um, but someone was like, why don't you, how come one of Trump's fans or, you know, why don't they just build a multi-billion dollar platform? You know so what I mean? So that's like, what, that's what Trump announced. What, he goes, well, maybe we'll build our own platform. So I was going to ask you right. this. I'm like, how, how easy is it to build a platform you more than likely just buy one that's already being built, right? Right, but even then, I mean, it. So you you, you run from problems with scale because as you scale, you need more. Um, you you need bandwidth, so you need server space. Yeah. So eventually, I mean, yeah, you could you could have your own server at home, but I mean, you're limited, right? Either the app's gonna or whatever the app, the website's gonna be really slow. It'll be. Um, susceptible to hacking you you want to use a service like microsoft azure which is a you know a, a server um, service or then biggest in the world amazon aws mm. or google has their cloud like you want one of those yeah you definitely don't and i mean yes some rich person could buy them a server farm but again it's still limited you're never going to match the the breadth of of uh you know yeah. of google or, or aws so that's the, the the scaling problem is they want to be big. He wants to be big because he can talk to a lot of people. Yes. 
But you know, and, and a even if you signed up a million people in a day, yeah, there's that's, no way yeah. that's going to be a good experience. It, it's like it's just not going to be. And yeah. How, and the the thing is, the only way they make I shouldn't say the only way, but if it's a platform that is known for hate and stuff like that, who's I mean, if most of these platforms all run on an ad system, that's how they make their money. You think Clorox bleach is going to be like, oh wait, you have a platform that has. <laughs> Only a million users or what, you know, whatever, two million, three, it doesn't matter, but it's based off of just hate. No way they're going to do that because then they're risking not only, well, I mean, they're, they're risking their reputation. No, like, not like, the my pillow guy. Of, not the my pillow guy, yeah. Yeah. But, but you get what I'm saying, so, yeah. right? So it's yes. just not, it's just not easy to see. Well, and, and um, it's a, you know, it, it's just like a, a world of trolls in there too. Uh, it, it oh, oh, and another thing too. Another thing too. So you're going to tell me that, uh, uh, not you, but you know, in general, uh, yeah. that you know all the Stanford, uh, you know, computer engineering uh, students that just graduate, they're going to be like, "Yeah, I'm going to go work for this platform that is everything I stand for," right. and they're going to pay me one tenth of what Google or Facebook or one of the legit platforms can pay me. Yeah. So you're gonna. I mean, you're gonna end up having the guy that dressed in headdress that broke into the, the Capitol building. He's gonna be your head programmer. Good luck with that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it would be it would be nice uh, for everyone else, for even for the feds, uh, just because it would, you know, where they are, right? They would be all in one place where it's easy to monitor. Um, That's true too. Yeah. yeah. I think that they um that. They, right now they're just like mixed, uh, intermingled, they have like par- uh, yeah, they sporadically have parlor, peppered. Right? I love how Parlor got kicked off. That's hilarious. Uh, off of Apple, right? Off of well, off of well, A- I believe they were powered by AWS, and, and then they the shut services. them down. And they shut them down, so they can find a I new. Believe, and they can find a new one, but then they run into the problems that you just talked about, right? Exactly, yeah. because any major player is not going to house them. I'm sure they probably went, oh, you know, whoever, they were like, oh, okay, well, like, we need a new, you know, web services service. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they went to Microsoft, Azure, they probably went to all the other ones, and Google, and I'm pretty sure they're, obviously, they got rejected. Yeah. So then well, they're do you want, go to you want some, us to change your name? You want us to change your name? We're fine. We're fine. Right. So I'm pretty sure they, they're going to end up going with a third tier service. Yeah. And it's just not the same. I mean, there'll be outages. When yeah. they try to scale, they don't have the manpower that someone like Amazon. It'll be buggy. Um, It'll be buggy. Op- open, It'll, open to hacking. Open to hacking. Yeah, for for sure. They just don't have the manpower. And then yeah. y- you have to assume that Parler is not getting top tier talent, right? I mean, they're they're just not. Yeah. I mean, there's not. I don't even have to convince anybody. They're just not getting <laughs> top convince anyone. They're good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think that it, it'll be interesting to see what happens um, and the amount of money they'll have to pour into this so called yeah. thing. I know I was asking you about, um, I mean, Mike, like, hey, has uh, 1984 and Orwellian, uh, has that been trending? And you're like, eh, no, not have. really. Not, a, not on YouTube or anything. Not on YouTube. Yeah. It was on Twitter for a little bit there, but that's another thing that I've been um, looking to uh, re read. And or rewatch is 1984. It's a little funny. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to make fun of the people who keep, um, you know, hashtagging 1984 is here because it's really about government control, right? Mm-hmm. And overstepping their power. But it's also, there's a lot of, um, it's, it's incredibly similar to how Trump is, or is, has been, acting, you know, like a dictator and you want to kill the oppression. You only want one viewpoint. Uh, and on top of that, it, it everyone kind of gets it wrong when they're like, 1984 is here. Um, because it's like how in, I, in the book, um, government uses technology to control people, but it's the opposite today because technology just said, F you, you're gone. <laughs> yeah. This is the you're opposite. Gone. So it's not 
like 1984. So it's, crazy. It's, it's not one Orwellian. Of the times where I haven't heard about a tweet that our president put out. No, I, I, I I'm no. just t- I don't. Are, are people just tired? Even people that are fans of him, aren't you just tired? Every day. Remember when we had other all the other presidents? You hear about them once in a while. You know, like you hear about Ob- oh, Obama did this great thing, or not or if that's what you feed was, on. You know, if you like, if if yeah, you like every hate, single day. Oh no! On major I think people. Television. Nah, I think I think if you're missing something in your life, or that's what that's what feels good to you, is somebody who is constantly picking on somebody else, or you know, somebody. Okay, then never mind. I'm I'm tired of hearing about a president. No, m- most people are. Even if it's like you know, even if it was. When Joe Biden comes in, I don't want to hear about what he's doing every day either, and I'm sure they won't. I think he knows that, He's not going to be tweeting. Yeah. yeah, he knows that. But um, but anyways, okay, so um, before we go, on a more positive note, this is the show that I told you I wanted to talk about. Yeah. And I don't know if you heard about it, so it's called Lupin. Lupin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The French, it? the French, the French, um, the fr- Arnaz, Lu- French series. Arnaz, off the story Arnaz Lupin, did you watch it? I haven't watched it, um, but... I'm on episode three, and I'm going to watch one episode at least before I go to sleep. It is freaking cool. Yeah? It's it's so... Well, I mean... It's a heist movie. I really like... Yes, it's a heist movie, and I love heist movies. So I like Ocean's Eleven. I think it's got that cool vibe. Um, well, a, it's, it takes place in Paris. I yes. love Paris. Yeah. Um, I love heist movies. Yeah, it's a high, or it's a heist series, and it's just got so apparently. And it's like a re, actor, and it's like a recruiting heist movie too, because they need to f- get the right guy. There's only one guy who can do it, right? It it kind of reminds me of um, of oh god, it's, it's my favorite revenge movie. Oh, uh, it kind of reminds me of the Count of Monte Cristo, kind of, kind of a revenge movie. Like a yeah, like a revenge movie. And like he'll do whatever it takes to to avenge his, you know, avenge his father, yeah, avenge yeah. you know the reason why he needs revenge. Um, it's just very cool. And and apparently the lead actor, he's an award winning actor, and he Omar Sy, I believe is his name. He is also the creative director, so he so I think he's kind of in charge of the look. Mm. It's just it's just so cool. Okay, it just oozes cool, and he's just like a he. he he figures out how to get out of everything. And as soon as you're just like, as soon as you're watching it, you're like, oh, okay, how's, how is he going to get out of this without, without a, um, ex machina kind of, uh, you know, kind of thing where the writers kind of work their way into a corner. And then, you know, it just so happens that the, he's stuck in jail and the walls blow up, you know, like something. Right, stupid. right, right. Yep. But they come up with a pretty creative way to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm okay. Hoping. Okay. Let me ask you this: What yeah, but, made you decide to watch that? Besides it being a heist movie, like, did you not notice that it was like French and dubbed? <laughs> Do you watch it with oh, the subtitles? Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh yeah, and that's uh, actually I texted my mom this morning and I told her that I watched two episodes last night and I said, "Oh, you have to watch it," but it's defaulted to English dub. Yeah, and I was like, "You have to take that off." immediately yeah, put it yeah, on yeah, French yeah. And, and and read the subtitles because the dubbing is so terrible it totally takes you out of it because is it that's um, a I mean that's a it's a it's, I don't, it's not a classic tale or is it is a classic it's, French it's, tale it's a classic tale it's it was written, the gentleman I, or, thief so the, right am I getting a that gentleman right? thief yep a gentleman thief apparently the first book came out in 1904 if I'm not mistaken mm. and um I don't want to ruin it for anybody okay, but yeah. apparently like he he, he essentially like models himself over the the thinking of uh, yeah 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 one of the books so and it's, it's so crazy you, you you've you've um you're gonna you're gonna give this as much of a rating or uh, as much as you want to watch this as you did Queen's Gambit because I remember like we were talking about how there are some series uh, where you're just like eh, and Queen's Gambit was the first one you're like I gotta watch the next one in all honesty Queen Queen's Gambit was even more though so so far. I would I could not turn off the TV pretty much mm-hmm. when I watched Queen's Gambit. This one I, I watched. Well, I also had to wake up early this morning, but um, I mean, granted, I'm only in the third episode too. 
Okay. Who knows? Maybe I'll get more. I'll get further sucked in. I, uh, I, so far, Queen's Gambit's pretty high in my book, and then this is this is pretty good so far, though. Yeah. I really you, please watch it, or at least start. I want I want to get your feedback. I, I will. I I I, I, I will actually. Um, yeah, it's in my to watch list. So. Oh, I did. So okay. So the reason why I watched it, you asked me something super exciting, but it, it came up on my YouTube feed. It mm. was in my feed, and it was like you know new. New shows. Um, I can't remember if it was made by Net. Oh, it wasn't the trailer. It was. Um, I think someone had done a review or something about the trailer where they were saying it was one of the first or the first French show to debut on Netflix. Is the. In the- That's another thing too. That's what I was gonna say. I'm like, yeah. I haven't seen a lot of French on Netflix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All over yeah. Amazon, yeah. but. Yeah, and it was and it was great. As soon as and then I I walked I watched uh, the trailer and I was like, okay, Paris, you know, a, a cool heist guy that has to make friends with some not so, you know, not so great people, but got to figure it. Out. Yeah, it was hmm. good good show so far. So. Okay, with it with every Continue. breath you you you, re, you reveal some more of the story, Lance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. really want to talk about so, it, so I'll watch so it. So spoiler, spoiler alert. Yeah, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably <laughs> I'll watch it. it. I'll watch it. I'll, I'll watch it. I'll finish it by this weekend, and then um, you tell me when you're done, and then we'll 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 discuss. Deal, man. But, but anyways, um, I have nothing else to add, uh, guys. Thanks for listening to Real Parallels. I'm Lance, and I am Carl. And um, hey, let us know if you uh, if you have your favorite French flick. Or collapse of government <laughs> movie. <laughs> Favorite collapse. And on that, there's a note, ton of them we'll out there. Mad you. Max is Mad Max is a great collapse That's of, a French of movie? society, right? Oh, 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 collapse. Okay, I thought that was a French movie. Anyways, yeah. Oh, by the way, I have to watch Mad Max Fury. Been- Wait, Fury Road? Or Fury Road? Yeah. You've never seen it? No, I have HBO now, so I watch it. You've never seen Fury Road? I know. Okay. Okay, are we gonna are we gonna continue this for another half an hour? Yeah. Oh my I'll watch god, it. I want to watch it. it with you. <laughs> I'll watch it. I'll it's watch one it of the week. greatest movies ever, and the the original I guy came back know. to do it. I know. I'll watch it. I'll watch. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Okay. But anyways, all right. We'll talk about it next time. All right, man. Uh, bye, everybody.